Hi, it's Mary Allen with IT in Canada, and I'm here today at the meeting of the Minds Conference in Boulder, Colorado, speaking with Nick Vila, who is the Senior Director of Urban Innovation Public Sector Practice Internet Business Solutions Group, the ISBG. Nick, thanks for taking the time to speak with me. Thank you you. Um, appear to have an awful lot of international experience that you shared with us in the panel session earlier today. And this is experience working with government organizations on the development of broadband and networking sol uh, solutions for large-scale urban development projects. Can you talk to me a little bit about the genesis of these projects? Who typically would take the lead in bringing these projects from concept to creation? I, I imagine it's a very complex interchange. It is absolutely a very complex interchange, and there is no uh, one-size-fits-all model. However, usually uh, we see the government taking the lead in the establishment of the vision for a smart or a quality city. Uh, however, the government does not follow directly into the implementation all the way to the end. Uh, developers, telecom service providers, IT companies and utilities basically come and play a role. So it's quite uh, difficult in many ways up front to understand and to, and to determine who's going to decide what, when and where, who's going to pay and monetize with which type of investment. So we look at the city as a sort of organic uh, uh, construction. And in many ways, uh, the challenge that we all have is to collaborate and to swarm around those uh, visions that the government creates and be able to execute quite effectively. How is the collaboration and the communication with the new type of partners that you have to work with in these kinds of implementations? Because you're not just working with technology companies, although I imagine there's quite a bit of that as well. So there's two scenarios. One is when we work with other technology companies in the IT and the non-IT world, and we seem to be finding each other quite quickly in terms of language, in terms of culture, right. but also in terms of business objectives. Right. In many ways, the challenges come when we start working with NGOs and governments and academic institutions who have, first of all, different objectives, but also different languages and different cultures. So lots of uh, translation and mediation is to be done. Some cities have taken it to a very innovative uh, uh, process by developing some sort of uh, special purpose vehicles, organizations like the Amsterdam Innovatie Motor in Amsterdam, who basically are mediating and providing neutral ground for companies, academics, government, and the people to come together and to innovate with uh, uh, future proof projects. Okay. Um, how important is IT innovation to the creation and execution of sustainable urban design? I'm asking if you could, for a minute, think about the city of the future and what technologies do you think will be absolutely critical and really transformative? Now, first of all, uh, information technology has become uh, a fundamental element into the design of the sustainable city. Until five years ago, you could design uh, a sustainable city keeping the network and IT as an afterthought. At this moment, you cannot do this otherwise. If not for the fact that the network allows you to rethink where people work, live, play and learn. So the network has an impact on, uh, on urban design, and it's quite heavy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, can we think a minute for the challenges that you face in implementing smart and urban connected communities? Is the problem lack of vision? Is it lack of greenfield opportunity? Is budget? What are the chief stumbling blocks, and, and how can you overcome these? I think in collaborating uh, with the government, the business world has become to a very consolidated view of what the vision should be. So vision is becoming less of a problem. Everybody agrees on what the city of the future will look like. On an execution perspective, we have quite a few technology solutions which are really available on the market. The issue is the strategies in between. The governance model, the financial models on how the, all the parties, pu public and private, come together and invest into those type of, uh, of programs. So the lack of a blueprint on how to move from vision into execution is probably the biggest inhibitor today to innovation from a smart city perspective. Okay. Is there a geographical or a regional component to this? I mean, when you're thinking about challenges, what would be the primary challenge in Canada, for example? I think Canada, as much of the Western world, faces a challenge in terms of being able to uh, combine and blur together all of the legacy systems from a technology, urban infrastructure, and political point of view, which overlay on top of each other for the last 50 years. So we see uh, more of a greenfield uh, environment in Asia 
but there is less legacy, there is less uh, regulatory frameworks that the cities have to comply with. Mm -hmm. In the Western world, in Canada, mm -hmm. managing this complexity and basically stitching all the pieces of the puzzle together mm -hmm. is the main issue. And therefore, again, governance mm -hmm. and translation from a cultural legislator, legislator, legislatory perspective is the big piece of work that needs to be done. Technology is there, it's probably more than enough at the moment. Mm -hmm. I would imagine there would be more need to retrofit or there might be more entrenched interests in a place like North America that maybe is a, an issue for you know new project planning. Sure. If you look at the difference between a brownfield uh, or an existing city environment in Canada and a greenfield in China, uh, the opportunity in China is to basically apply a top-down design process and basically design all the utilities at once and make sure that the network, the IT network, basically touches all the other infrastructures. In the Western world, in Canada in particular, you will have to go and IP enable each of the elements of the built environment one by one, the utility, the transportation systems, and the building. So you will basically have a segmented approach. Mm -hmm. You will probably integrate not at the infrastructure level, you have many infrastructures into the city from an IT side, but you will probably go and integrate at the data level. Mm -hmm. So the networks that you have into the city produce lots of data, it's easy to blur those, those data together and create intelligence that to basically try and consolidate different networks which have been overlaid on top of each other for the last 20 years. Okay, good, good answer. Actually, I had a lunchtime conversation about that. Um, my last question is about energy. And um, I'm thinking about the smart and connected community of the future. It's uh, heavily instrumented. There are tons of sensors. The network is really, you know, the lifeblood. Um, and this is all necessary for these ubiquitous networks. So how do you weigh the energy impact of this increased use of IT against the overall goal, if you're talking about sustainability, of using IT to reduce carbon emissions? What's the calculation that you would make there? Now, we didn't make a calculation. There's a number of reports out there. Probably the most uh, famous and compelling one is called Smart 2020, which was created by the Klana Group. When you look into the negative impact of ICT in terms of carbon emissions and energy consumption being offset on an order of magnitude of five, but the positive uh, uh, impact that ICT basically provides in terms of virtualization, in terms of decrease of energy consumption in buildings and in uh, factories and so on. So ICT, yes, is an uh, energy consumption source, but is also probably the only infrastructure into a city that touch all the other ones and make them smarter. Transportation system become intelligent, Buildings become energy efficient, and grids become smart. So that's basically the way in which, from a Cisco perspective, we're looking into the network becoming the platform for sustainability and innovation. Okay. Thanks very much for your insight, Nick. I really appreciate it. Thank you.